In this video, we're going to be introducing the second type of compound, and we're going to fill in our chemical bond chart while introducing the second type of compound. The second type of compound that we're going to be looking at is going to be called a molecular compound. The type of compound is called a molecular compound, but the name of the bond is called a covalent bond. Previously, we were dealing with a metal atom connecting or sticking together with or bonding with a non-metal atom. So we were looking for an atom from this side of the periodic table, the left side, connecting or bonding with a non-metal from the other side of the periodic table. Now what we're looking at is we're looking at a non-metal atom connecting or bonding with another non-metal atom. So now we've got two atoms from the same side of the periodic table in which both of them are non-metals. What happens when we get two non-metals together connecting, both of them, both of those atoms are trying to gain electrons. So what happens is instead of gaining and losing electrons, since they're both trying to gain electrons, Neither one is strong enough to take the other electrons away. So what happens is instead of gaining and losing electrons like we have with a metal and a non-metal, we end up sharing electrons. And there's two types of sharing that will take place. Notice I'm going to skip a box. I'm going to say that there is an unequally sharing electrons. So you can have two atoms that are unequally sharing electrons. You can also have two atoms that are equally sharing electrons. Well, how do we know if two atoms are going to be sharing the electrons equally? or sharing the electrons unequally. It's based off of the difference in electronegativity. So if I look at the back side of my oxidation state chart, I remind myself that electronegativity is an attraction for electrons. It's a measured value for the attraction of electrons. Metals on this side have a low attraction, so it has a low electronegativity. Nonmetals on this side have a high attraction, so it has a high electronegativity. So what happens when we get two nonmetals that are going to connect? We look at their difference in electronegativity. If the difference is very similar, that means they have similar strengths in attracting electrons, they will equally share electrons. But if their strengths are a little bit different from one another, that means one is a little bit stronger in attracting electrons than the other atom, then they will unequally share. So the question becomes, what at what point do we say that they are equally sharing versus unequally sharing? Well, here we had a value of 2.1 or greater. When the difference is that big for ionic, there's a complete transfer of electrons. So we know the difference of sharing has to be below 2.1. And the difference of sharing is going to be from 0.5 or if we're moving on a continuum, from 1.6 down to 0 0.5.
if the difference, if when you look at the two atoms that are connecting, the two atoms that are sticking together, the two atoms that are bonding, if you look at the difference in the electronegativities of those two values, and it ranges between 1.6 down to 0.5, then we say the difference is big enough, it's a big enough difference, that they are unequally sharing. They're still sharing electrons, they're just going to be unequally sharing. And then, here we go from 0.4, if their difference is from 0.4 down to 0 0.0, then we say they are equally sharing electrons. The resulting structure that we have is called a polar molecule, and we'll explain more on that, versus a non-polar molecule. Polar molecule versus a non polar molecule. And then the smallest unit is the exact same thing. A polar molecule and a non polar molecule. So polar molecules versus non polar molecules. The example that I'm going to give you for a polar molecule is H2O. So in H2O, and we're going to learn about how to draw these structures, we have an oxygen atom, and it is connected to a hydrogen atom. Notice, I'm not circling electrons and sending them over like I did with NaCl. This one line represents a bond, the connection between one non-metal atom, O, O is on this side, the non-metal atom, and H. Now remember that H, even though it's on this side of the periodic table with the metals, it's the one element that's a non-metal, but we have to put them on the left side because it has one valence electron, just like all the other atoms in column 1A with one valence electron. So we couldn't put H over on this side because then it would be in the wrong column. So we have to put them there. We just have to remember it really belongs over here on the non-metal side. So we have a non-metal and another non-metal. So we're allowing them to share electrons. So this connection, this line here, really represents electrons that are being shared. We also have a couple of pairs of electrons on the back side of the oxygen that we'll talk about later. So there's the structure of H2O, water. When we look up O on our electronegativity chart, it's 3.44. And then when we look up hydrogen, it's 2.20. So O equals 3.44. H equals 2.20. When we subtract those, I get 1.44, which falls in the range of 1.6 down to 0.5. So it's a polar molecule. It's unequally sharing electrons. The way that I demonstrate that it's unequally sharing electrons is these electrons, this bond, really represents two shared electrons. We draw an arrow pointing to oxygen with a little line on the back side. And that creates a partially negative, this funny looking S symbol means partially, partially negative side, and then over here, partially positive side. Notice over here I wrote complete positives and negatives because the electron moved completely from one atom to another. 
But over here, we can't do that because the electrons are still being shared. It's just they're unequally shared. That means they're getting pulled closer to oxygen. Why are they getting pulled closer to oxygen? Because oxygen's a little bit stronger, 3.44, versus hydrogen at 2.20. So those, the way we show that is we draw an arrow. And on the back side of the arrow, we put a vertical line across the arrow, indicating that this side's going to be a little bit positive because the negative electrons are getting pulled closer to oxygen. The next example is a nonpolar molecule. And we're going to take oxygen and allow it to connect to another oxygen. When we do this, it actually makes two bonds between the two oxygen atoms. Not always when they are the same atom does that happen, but in this case it does. And we'll learn about why it makes a double bond later. So here's what the structure looks like. Notice oxygen is 3.44. The other oxygen has to be the same, 3.44. So O at 3.44 the other O at 3.44 gives you a difference in electronegativity of zero. So they are sharing the electrons equally because neither one of them is stronger than the other. So we don't have any pluses or minuses, partial pluses or minuses to deal with here because the electrons are being shared equally between the two oxygen atoms. I hope this helps with understanding molecular compounds made with covalent bonds, a nonmetal and another nonmetal, and then there's two types. Both are sharing electrons. One is sharing them unequally and the other is sharing them equally. Creating a polar molecule unequally, polar like the North and the South Pole, it has poles to it and partially negative and partially positive. And then nonpolar, where there is no positives or negatives. By the way, I will say this is the oxygen molecule. Because there's no positives and no negatives, there's no stickiness between one molecule and another. Because there's no stickiness, we find this as a gas where the molecules just hit each other and bounce off. But here, because there are positives and negatives, these water molecules become stickier with themselves. So now this is a liquid. I hope this helps in understanding molecular compounds.